Chevy Chase. <laughs> oh, dude, that man leaves a, a mean voicemail. <laughs> He's terrible, man. <laughs> you create your own show and then you're fucking done. Well, he was really pissed off about that hairline receipt and everything, too. So, I mean, don't ever bring that up around Chevy. To Chevy. To Chevy. Chevy, if you're out there watching, we love you. Yes. <laughs> Which I know you are, because you don't have any work to do these days, so... Keep it up, man. True. <laughs> we're, we're one another's biggest fans. Uh, but anyway, 8 o'clock hour last week, uh, we had Crushing on You with a 3-2 win over the Summer School Kicks. Summer School Kicks flying high after that shutout of Wrecking Balls. But Crushing on You, keeping it going. Uh, they welcomed back uh, Mr. Brian No Shoes Moore to the squad. Uh, you know, which really helped them out, I'm sure. They were able to eke out this win, um, which, you know, all of these games this week, uh, that 4-0 America win is the closest game we had. So, you know, just once again, we talk about this all the time, but a testament to, like, it's so back and forth, you know. Um, I really, anyway, uh, <laughs> so Manny and Crystal's team crush on you over summer school kicks. Uh, both of us were playing during that hour, so apologize for not having a lot of input into uh, the specifics of that game. Yeah, Our game actually ended a little bit early, so I walked over just to take a glimpse of this to find out what was going on. And with Manny running that team, and we played Crushing on you in the first week, and I said, uh, you know, in, in the week after that, they're going to take that as a learning experience, build on it, and uh, retweak some things, and I, this is the uh, product of that equation right here. And uh, Crushing on You was actually up, uh, I think it was 3-1 uh, to one or 3 nothing uh, until the later innings uh, before summer school kicks started getting some people on uh, base and everything. So, you know, they, they were doing the right things. I know uh, that they were missing some guys, but uh, Crushing on You retweaked the lineup, got some people in position. I, I saw they had a lot of ducks on the pond, as uh, Jorts would say. But uh, just, uh, it looked like a, a very uh, just stereotypical, fundamental game. Uh, you know, not a lot of crazy plays that I saw when I was watching, but it, it's good to see Crushing On You uh, altering their little game plan a little bit and getting those wins in the later part of this short season. All right, so that win bumps them up to the three-way tie with three-and-one teams. Um, they're the only one of those three and one teams who did not suffer their first loss this week, as we'll see with, uh, we saw Wrecking Balls lost to Summer School Kicks for their first loss, and we'll get to you guys, Ivan Dragos, taking your first loss. So, you know, he, uh, it's creating a log jam at the top. Once Starting, you, no one can run away with this thing. A little mix up right now. You know, you're starting to play a couple of teams that are a little bit higher on the radar, and things are starting to shake out to a more even keel. No more undefeated teams now. Oh, that's right. And um, so, uh, we mentioned the Wrecking Balls win. Um, the next game, they scored a 3-1 win over the Americans. Um, America also suffering their first loss in this game, although we have a tie earlier, so now 2-1-1. One, and, one. Um, <clears throat> and based on, uh, let me see, run differential, Wrecking Balls right now are winning that three-way tie for first place. Um, you know, that is the ultimate, or after head-to-head, -head, that would be the tiebreaker there. I call those padded stats. I also call those padded stats. We well. won't get into that debate right now. <laughs> we will after this segment. Okay, completed. fine. We'll do this between takes. Yeah, or we can plug it in the lightning round. I think there was a question on there about padded stats, so we'll answer that later. Sorry, George. That's fine. Go ahead, buddy. Um, early going, uh, America. Um, we put that first run across in the first inning. You know, offense doing what it should do there. Um, you know, getting Ricky on, moving him to third, bringing him in with the sack, uh, just how you draw it up, but uh, Wrecking Balls was able to hold it down to one there. Uh, that's the way it stayed until the fourth inning, I believe. Um, you know, Wrecking Balls, in the bottom half, credit to the bottom half of their lineup for making this happen. Uh, they got runners on, they moved them around, um, you know, issued a walk, we got the second outs, so now bases loaded with two outs. And I'm pretty sure Jonathan Pills, you know, good line drive right over the short uh, shortstop. Uh, Kim Merritt coming in, tough ball to make a play on, well-kicked ball, you know, just misses it sliding in, get a tough ricochet, wrecking balls, take the lead there. 
And then, uh, you know, once again, credit them, they shut down. We had the top half of our order coming back up. Uh, couldn't make any plays, and so that's, I mentioned this before in other games, it's one of those one play, and that's what really deciding most of these games from what I see. Yeah, when it comes down to this league and with the draft and just making everything so even keel, one play could make or break you on that game because everybody's just so well evenly matched. And uh, just, I got a, a one thing I want to shout out to, and I heard a lot about this at the bar, and this is a very uh, prideful thing to say uh, for Rick, uh, for just, just how people speak so highly of you uh, in this league, but there was a couple people, Troy Southall and Sterling Wilcox, who came up to me at the bar and was like, you won't believe this play, you know, Troy gets the ball, Rick's on first, and they rifle it. Troy makes a great throw to second base uh, to Sterling to grab that ball and get Ricky out on the throw from first to second, wow. which is a pretty impossible feat in the fact. But, uh, you know, just, you know, awesome play for them because, you know, if Ricky gets on two, you know, the, the ball's overthrown or anything like that. He's going he, home. He, he can turn around and take three, and there's no doubt in my mind, wherever you kick it, infield, outfield, Ricky can get home, and that can start swaying the game around into a different uh, outcome. So that was a great play on Wrecking Ball's part. Mark Flores actually rejoined. Uh, returned. <laughs> returned for Wrecking Ball's. He told me he was stuck in a little uh, south uh, tunnel traffic. You know, you try to go across that monitor Merrimack, trying to avoid the HRBT, and of course the monitor Merrimack starts getting backed up. So he missed the first game, but was there for the second game to add a little support for Wrecking Ball's, especially on the defensive end for America only to get one run. Uh, but fantastic job on the Wrecking Ball's part, uh, still solidifying that fact that you're one of the top teams in the Patriot League. And uh, one more week to go before we decide who's going to number one, number two in the bowl games. And so we had wrapping out the night, uh, JFK, the Just for Kicks versus the Ivan Dragos. Mm. Another uh, close game, a 2-1 win for JFK. And I'll, uh, I'll let you gentlemen take it away. Go ahead, man. Oh, okay. Um, wow, what do I have to say? This, is, uh, this was a great defensive matchup. Um, you've got um, uh, Gene. At Gene Charger. The and, first thing uh, I threw out there on JFK that game was Gene. Uh, you've got Gene and Duncan um, behind the plate. So um, we were. I'm sorry. Uh, I guess. Uh, You're getting choked up right yeah, now. Yeah, it's okay. Man, because it's okay. I'm just going through the whole game in my head right yeah, now. That first and, loss always hurts. And, uh, man, you just got to respect the the, uh, the the prowess of those two guys on the field. Um you know, we, we made some mistakes. We, we tried to bunt it, I guess, a little too much, and we should have just been kicking away on those guys. Um, Gene got on base and, in the first inning and rounded the bases as quickly as he could and got in and, and got him on the board. First sack, inning. sack fly by Scott Duncan. Kicked it deep, which you caught. Which you caught. Yeah, thank you. Uh, one little thing I got to jab. One little jab I got to put in yeah. there. I had been talking trash all day on uh, Josh Joyner's thread. And I told Scott Duncan, you will not get on base, and you did not get on base, yeah. man. Popped out to Pena and popped out to myself on a laser rocket pitch. Um, but those guys are tough, man. Do not uh, take anything away from those guys at all. You know, I, I certainly did not want to uh, play the short game with those guys in the field. I kicked away. Uh, I think the strategy against those guys for us would have been to kick away, but we didn't really come around to that until the later part, and by that time it was just too late. So yeah, uh, it was a close game, a very defensive game. Yeah. Uh, Brent Wentworth did a good job pitching. Josh Joyner did a good job pitching. Um, yeah, I say I, I did all right pitching. I mean, uh, <laughs> I, I can't do the voice no. this time. Oh, man, I'm sorry. I've had too many games. But uh, oh, great job. Great. I mean, I think it was two well, well matched teams coming out to play, and you know we both had game plans against each other. And, you know, I had a nice bunt on the third baseline, <laughs> and I pitched pretty well. So, uh, you know, whatever. And watching that guy running, it looks like it, it's so painful. <laughs> watching Brent Wentworth run yeah. down 
the baseline. It it looks like he's in a lot of pain. I hope so. he doesn't run away on that baseline down that aisle tomorrow. Oh no, that's not happening. Uh, yeah. But uh, MVP of that game for JFK has to go to Gene Eford. I mean, that guy, you could bunt it down the first baseline, and he's there before the pitcher, catch our first baseman, and he's just a phenomenal athlete. He's so quick on that ball. Uh, but it was a good defensive game, and uh, I think there's a, it was who's going to make the least amount of mistakes. We made a couple mistakes, and it's very rare for Joe Purcell, Guy Sumrall, and Jeff Polly not to get on base. Uh, in a game. So they scouted us out really well and took care of business defensively. So we're really hoping that we can uh, tighten up uh, this last week and see you guys for a rematch in the bowl game. Absolutely. I would love that match. There are so many matchups I would love. And we're going to talk about matchups coming up in week four next. Uh, final week of the regular season. We have three hours of games to preview. So a lot of fun, a lot of things can change, a lot of shake up in the standings. So stick around, we'll preview those, and we'll see what's coming up in the month of August. Woo! I love August. I'm it's getting ready. hot. I'm excited. Hot! And, Baltong, where are you at? He's still waiting for his prime rib dinner yeah. with you. Yeah, all you can eat, $22.99 at the Cactus. So, find this guy. This is this looks like the face of a man who's not fucking around when he's talking about prime rib, all right? I'm going to take whole beef, whole slab of prime rib and store it in this beard for late night leftovers. <laughs> oh, I could sneak out of there with one in there.